Hi, I'm Elaine Notla, and you're watching the Midday Update live from my home studio. Now, we have quite an interesting section set up for you. Today's main topic is all eyes on Istana Negara as MPs arrive to meet the King. And we have two very special guests that we'll be speaking to today. The first guest will be Chris Daniel Wong, the MCA Youth Federal Territories Vice Chairperson. And my second guest will be Edin Koo, journalist as well as political commentator. And today we'll be speaking about the topic of Malaysia and its leadership. Now, before we go into that, we have some stories to share with you, top of the uh, day. Uh, in a strong hint that Isma Sabri has won the Prime Minister's post, supporters are called to the palace today. Now, MPs deem support towards Amnos Bera MP, Datuk Sri Isma Sabri Yaakob, for the post of Prime Minister, has been granted an audience with the young Dipratuan Agong at various times today. Amnos Secretary General Datuk Sri Ahmad Maslan, who confirmed the matter, says MP from AMNO, Barca National, Bursatu, GPS and PASS have been summoned to Istana Negara between 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. today. In the next story, all 31 Bursatu MPs and four aligned with party have been advised to back AMNO Vice President Datu Sri Isma Sabri Yaakob as the next Prime Minister. Now, Bursatu Supreme Council member Datu Edin Shazli says the advice came from President Tatri Muhyiddin Yassin himself. While Isma Sabri looks to be the front runner, some Supreme Council members say the deal is not set in stone. All MPs have submitted their statutory declarations to the Istana Negara by 4 p.m. yesterday. Next, the person appointed as the next Prime Minister must prioritise the rakyat's welfare and is backed by a strong cabinet. Now, Parti Pri Bumi Bersatu Malaysia Deputy President and Tambun MP Datuk Sri Ahmad Faisal Azumu says politics must take a back seat as the country faces the pandemic and people are suffering where health and economy must be on the top of the Prime Minister's list. Now, the party has agreed to unanimously support this candidate whom can bring together not only the parties in Perikatan, but also act as a unifier for everyone to work together. Now, we move on to the guest that will be joining me today. Uh, today, I'm speaking to Chris Daniel Wong, MCA Youth Federal Territories Vice Chairperson on the topic of Malaysia and leadership. Hello, welcome, Chris. Welcome to the show. Pleasure to have you join us here. Thank you. Now, I'll, I'll dive into the first question. Now, as an MCA member, what do you make of what's going on? What are the young people saying? Tell us your thoughts. Well, um... Well, uh, today actually I didn't speak for my party, uh, but in fact I represent the Federation of Malaysia Business Association. Uh, but from the business community perspective and from the uh, people perspective on the ground, uh, we badly need uh, stability actually. So whoever comes into power today, uh, the party actually has to bring in stabilities. It is only through stabilities that we will see a lot of dry powder will come back, uh, which means that we will have more FTI and uh, even uh, internal DDI, domestic uh, um, um, investments, uh, coming back uh, into the uh, country. And then only we will have jobs for the people. And so, so with the jobs, then it will bring back stability as I, what I mentioned right now. So at this moment, uh, very important is that we need a game plan to bring down the infection number. Now, although we know that uh, many states have transitioned to phase two and some even phase three, and uh, 11 sectors in the phase one uh, states um, have actually been allowed to operate, uh, but uh, people are very fearful of coming out to consume services, let alone that uh, their pocket is coming, their pocket is drying up, right? And um, they, they, uh, I would say there are, they are uh, four types of people in the industry right now. We have 30% of businesses who have actually a uh, closed shop, Gulung Tikar. We have 30% of businesses who is actually in ICU. All right. We have 30% of businesses who is actually in pre-ICU. And only 10% of businesses which is actually continue to do well and uh, uh, survive. So, so, so the game plan for this new administration that's coming in is that we need to relook at the national recovery plan. We, know go, we need to go back to the drawing board to ensure that the SOPs are being perfected so that we can bring down the uh, infection. I just want to cite from a report that I saw today uh, from a local newspaper that 50.3% of the workplace infection are still coming in from the factory. 
So, so this is something that the new administration must uh, look at it very, very seriously as, um, as the people on the ground are continue to be worried on this development. Now, Chris, I want to bring back to, of course, the story of Malaysia and its leadership. And I have a lead question. Of course, all eyes, of course, is on Istana Negara as we speak. Uh, MPs are arriving to meet the king uh, throughout today. Anwar and Isma Sabri, those are the two names that have been put forth. What does this mean for the Malaysian political landscape from your point of view? Well, uh, to, to many people, especially the young people, uh, we can see that uh, it is still very much uh, status quo. Although Ismail Sabri uh, will be a new face, uh, but he has been there uh, for quite a while. So, um, so, so the, the same thing will continue to happen. Uh, the tussle of power between Pakatan Harapan and uh, Barisan National, Perikatan National. So one side will continue to say uh, they have the numbers, while the other side uh, will continue to say they do, ha they, they do have the mandate. So, 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 so we need to stabilize this, all right? Now, uh, there are many, many thoughts about a unity government, but we are an evolving society. We are democratic societies. The elected representative is actually the one that's making decisions for their constituency. So, so, so I, I think where does it leave us with the international business community? That's what I said earlier on. Whoever comes into power have to address this. I would say that uh, once parliament reconvened in September, that is my personal take, uh, that uh, the new Prime Minister has to put himself to a word of confidence so that we can actually put this to rest for the next one and a half year or one year before the next general election. All right? That's right. Then it will, it will give us a very stable government to move forward. Now let's look at the apparent global shift in the average age of politicians and somehow we hardly see that moving towards the younger leaders. What in your opinion seems to be the problem here? Well, well, I do agree to a certain extent that not many young people are thrust into the national politics, all right? Uh, there are many young people in politics, but they are not given the opportunity to govern, all right? And it is still the um, old guard games of throne. Now, we need more young people to be given opportunity. Uh, as you can see in the industry, all right, there are many, many startups, all right? And these startups, uh, founders or CEO of the companies are actually young people. Right? They are innovative, they are creative, and they bring their startups to a very successful uh, uh, company. So it's the same thing. If you give these young people an opportunity to lead, uh, probably in, in an agency or maybe uh, in, in a ministry department, and from there you can actually nurture them and uh, give them more, uh, what we call that, uh, on-the-job kind of training or, or give them more experience. And then uh, when you mix with the older and the younger statesmen, they will bring about a transition for the country to evolve to the next level, just like what we see in New Zealand and also uh, Denmark, where, where they have uh, prime ministers that's below 40 years old. So we need that. And yep. the transitions need to happen. That's right. Now, let's talk about how all dominant parties in Malaysia, for certain reasons, are based on ethnicity and anchored to region. For example, DAP in Pass, uh, DAP in Penang, Pass uh, in the Malay Belt, and PKR in Selangor. Do you think uh, Malaysian youth are ready to move out of this race base and anchor political support? What are your thoughts? Now, Anna, uh, uh, although many, now I, I quite agree with what you say, Elena. Uh, although we can see that uh, um, it's a multiracial kind of uh, a collision that is governing uh, Penang and also uh, um, Selangor right now. But the politics model of these two states are almost the same as in America. In America, we can see that the Democrats are in the city, uh, where it's the same as PKR as in the city with DAP. But then you will see that PAS or Amanah being in the uh, Bible Belt, which is actually the uh, Malay Belt in, uh, in, in Selangor. So, 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 so it is the conditioning to the society due to the economic, uh, due to the education polarization. So, so we, need, we need to move away from this education polarization. Now, uh, I do believe in, in, in a vision school uh, whereby students coming together and learn together, uh, just like what we have in the 70s and 80s, Sekolah uh, Kebangsaan, that uh, uh, races can actually uh, blend in together and then we don't have this kind of uh, annexity uh, uh, issues uh, uh, um, uh, in the states. But, but again, uh, as what I mentioned very earlier on, it is due to the education uh, polarization and this really needs to be addressed. 
Once we are able to address this, I go back to your previous questions, then we can see more younger politicians, okay. more younger administra uh, administrators coming into the country. All right. Thank you so much, Chris, for sharing your thoughts. We have been speaking to Chris Daniel Wong, MCA Youth Federal Territories Vice Chairperson, and of course, uh, the Federal Federation of Malaysian Business Association, uh, FMBA representative today. Now, we move on to our next guest. We uh, speaking to Edin Koo, journalist and political commentator, same on the topic of Malaysia and leadership. And I'd like to start with my lead question. Hi, Edin. Welcome aboard. Um, I hope that you're not on mute. Yes. Great. Yeah. Now, good morning. All, good morning. Now, all eyes, of course, is on Istana Negara. MPs are arriving to see the King Anwar and Isma Sabri. Both names are uh, sort of like put forth as the potential candidates. What does this mean for the Malaysian political landscape? Please do share your thoughts with us, Edin. Uh, basically, it means we are stuck in Groundhog Day. Uh, and this is pretty much deja vu uh, to about a year and a half ago, um, uh, because we've not been able to see our political transition, uh, which actually took place on, on May 9th of 2018. Uh, mm -hmm. We were supposed to view a different landscape. But um, even at that time, I think I was uh, quite cynical. It's very hard to bring about a watershed in politics uh, when you say you see, uh, when you uh, when you actually have the same old uh, dragons uh, hmm. still at war. Uh, and uh, um, I think we've arrived at a point of politics where we are like pretend big bad wolves, uh, huffing and puffing, and yet the house never comes down. And what we seem to have moved into is we have seemed to moved into uh, Perikatan Nasional 2.0. Yes. Um, uh, and actually, uh, my great disappointment here is with the opposition uh, led by Dato Sri Anwar Ibrahim uh, because they were actually able, I think it was public opinion more than the opposition, that was able to um, draw Tan Sri Mohidin Yassin into a gambit uh, and make that offer for bipartisan working uh, uh, along with a whole set of promises uh, and, uh, that, that he would deliver. And it was, I was dismayed to see the opposition rejected. Uh, just like, Well, it wasn't actually the opposition. We know that some members of the opposition uh, found it appealing and, um, and, and found it a good ground upon which to, to create a bi bipartisan relationship. But it was rejected outright by the uh, uh, leader of the opposition for God knows what reason. Uh, and we're back to this uh, uh, kind of carousel of uh, chasing chairs and, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, backroom dealings and things like that. Yes. That's not what this politics needs. It's a exactly. failure of civilian leadership. Now, uh, I'd like to start with this. Now, Rakyat Didahulukan, you being a prolific writer, and even earlier this year, you spoke, to, of course, to the sixth prime minister in an exclusive. When you speak to them, I mean, all politicians, do they care about the predicament of the country? And more importantly, uniting the people. Yeah, well, politicians are very schizophrenic beings, actually. Uh, at some level in their hearts, uh, they are... Uh, really quite committed to the collective, uh, but um, they are also very uh, caught up in the game. Uh, so there's this constant tussle between the idealism uh, and uh, 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 you know the, their their sense of what real politic uh, real politic is. Uh, that, that's why I think I have a certain uh, certain admiration for Dr. Mahadev because uh, whenever you meet him, you know what you're getting, uh, and his uh, understanding and mastery of the political system. Uh, is is uh, um, really quite manifest. Um, uh, the rest, so I think, uh, yes, of course, there's a commitment. There, there is a purported commitment, uh, but politicians seem to enjoy uh, the intrigue rather than doing any real work. <laughs> and in an interview with Benama last night, speaking of Tun himself, he talked about leading Magiran and not wanting to be prime minister. So now we know. But that aside, how do you see us moving forward from this mess the country seems to be in at this point in time? Okay, my, my great concern, of course, is that uh, uh, when we see uh, the politics uh, uh, undulating in this kind of way, uh, it does not breed confidence uh, in the people, yeah? Uh, and what essentially this means is that civilian authority uh, is beginning to uh, disassemble, deconstruct, and get very messy. And what that, and, and as people, especially in this time of pandemic, I, uh, do we actually understand the severity of this crisis? Um, I, I, I think we need to acknowledge that. And what, what people will then begin to wish for is something beyond civilian authority and leadership, 
uh, uh, looking at, for example, the monarchy or uh, even something beyond that uh, for stability. And that is a very dangerous situation to be in. Yeah? Now, let's quickly talk about your thoughts on some of this following. First, Undi18, your thoughts and your comments. Yes, uh, lower the voting age. That's what was promised. Uh, mm -hmm. But I think there's a lot that the young also have to do uh, in terms of, of, of uh, getting a sense of history, locating themselves in a sense of the past, uh, so that they can bring their ideas uh, forward. So it must be a generational bridge that we are talking about, not just the part, passing of the baton from one uh, generation to another. I'm very impressed with young leaders, except when they go into their particular party structures, it is all yes, sir, no, sir, three back, full, sir. So I yes. don't see what the difference is. Yes. Now let's talk about anti-hopping law. What about that? It's about time. Uh, we introduce things like recall uh, elections. Uh, remember that uh, uh, politicians and, and members of parliament must also be given the right to their own convictions. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. So even when we talk about anti-hopping laws, uh, we, we we need to be able to uh, we need to be able to um, uh, take into account that people can also uh, must be also given the right to work from their convictions. Except they don't now. Uh, they do it for all kinds of um, presents. That's right. Now, of course, uh, we are on the cusp of Merdeka. Uh, this is the month of August. Uh, Merdeka and Malaysia Day. Your thoughts? Um, well, we have kept the same tagline as last year, uh, which means uh, I don't think we've made very much uh, progress. Uh, for me, things like uh, Hari Kebangsaan and Malaysia Day uh, are important times to, to, to fall back uh, again on uh, rediscovering the past, locating ourselves in the past, and having a sense of continuum uh, for the nation. Now, we uh, always say that you need to know where you were uh, in order for you to you know, uh, head to where uh, the future is. Now, this being the Merdeka month, I thought we'd revisit a couple of interesting things that you've uh, yourself said before. Uh, these were some of the quotes uh, from circa 2006. It's been some time. Perhaps we'll refresh your memory. Now, what is the best thing about being Malaysian? 15 years older. You need to remind me about that. <laughs> well, the best thing about being Malaysian, of course, is that we are highly complicated, uh, rich, diverse, madden maddeningly complicated society. And I think it's about time we keep our Puritan uh, lurches and urges intact uh, and actually locate ourselves in what essentially is the real diversity of uh, our nation, our society and our cultural history. Now, being innately cosmo cosmopolitan, what does it mean? Uh, that means basically you go back to, um, uh, you know, when the, when, when the Portuguese first came to Malacca uh, and they sent uh, uh, messages back to the court of, of Portugal. Uh, this is what uh, uh, Tome Perez said. Uh, this landscape is amazing because at any given spot, nothing less than 90 languages are being spoken. That is the cultural reality of uh, Malaysia and Southeast Asia by extension. And that's not something we can uh, escape or should want to escape to get into neat little packaged categories uh, presenting ourselves in that way. That's beautiful. Now, my last question and your favorite quote, we'll just bring it up. Why can't we see what is clear as the light up day? This is by WH Auden in closing. Yeah, well, because, you know, we love the drama of politics. I, I always say one of the reasons why these wretched politicians have banned things like Wayang Kulit uh, is because uh, they are so jealous of the marvellous plots of in intrigue that you get in the shadow play. Uh, and they're so envious and jealous that they ban the, sh the shadow play and put themselves in the forefront uh, with their poverty-stricken plots uh, and uh, um, uh, rather silly dramas. Uh, uh, so I think, uh, um, yeah, and, and uh, I think we get caught up in it uh, and we can't see it for what it is. Thank you so much, Edin, for your thoughts. Pleasure to have you on the show as usual. Uh, we were speaking to Edin Kuo, journalist and political commentator about Malaysia and its leadership. Now we move on to the next story. Parti Pajuang Tanah IA Chairman Tun Dr. Madam Mamat says he has no interest in becoming Prime Minister for a third time, as well as any cabinet position, and is only keen on leading the National Operations Council of Mageran, as he proposed. Now, Dr. Made proposed the idea 
when the number of infection cases were hovering around 2,000 a day, but this was ignored. Now, on June 10, Dr. Made proposed a Mageran to the Yandi Pratun Agong during an audience as a potential solution to the issues Malaysia is currently facing. Now, in the next story, to an MCSU's party, Parti Perjuang Tanah Air would support Pakatan Harapan Chairman Datuk Sri Anwar Ibrahim should the latter become Prime Minister. In an interview with Panama TV last night, to M insists it was Anwar who rejected him during PH's administration and is prepared to work with his former deputy at any time. Now, we'd like to, of course, go over to Gerard to uh, give us a snapshot of the international news. Over to you, Gerard. Take it away. Thank you very much, Elaine. Uh, in international news, a uh, lot happening. We'll start with this. WHO Chief Scientist Soumya Swaminathan says current data does not indicate that COVID-19 booster shots are needed. These comments came by, just before the US government says it plans to make the booster shots widely available to all Americans starting the 20th of September. Well, uh, they're doing this because the Delta variant infections are on the rise within the United States. Now, in the meantime, um, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau says uh, that they are trying to get as many refugees as they can to return from Afghanistan, but blames the Taliban for preventing many from getting to the airport in Kabul. About 5,000 diplomats, security staff, aid workers, and Afghans have been evacuated from Kabul in the last 24 hours. Now, moving on to North America, according to President Joe Biden and the Pentagon, U.S. troops may stay in Afghanistan past an August 31st deadline, and this is to evacuate Americans as the U.S. military currently doesn't have the ability to reach the people beyond the Kabul airports. Biden has come under fire, uh, or rather under fierce criticism, for his handling of the withdrawal, which has uh, been dominated by scenes of chaos in and around Kabul airport, uh, with people desperately trying to get out of the country now. In his defense, this is what he says, problems are inevitable in ending a 20-year-old U.S. involvement within Afghanistan. Um, that's how he's decided to deal with that. In the meantime, Facebook has gone on to remove over three dozen pages spreading misinformation about COVID-19 vaccines after the White House called on social media firms to tighten control on pandemic-related facts shared on their platforms. Apparently, these are hindering the numbers of inoculation within the country. Not many people are coming out for their jabs. And animal abusers and those who abandon their pets will soon face harsher punishment as South Korea plans to amend its civil code to grant animals legal status. According to its Justice Ministry's Director General of Legal Counsel, the amendment will make South Korea as one of the countries to recognize animals as beings with a right to protection, enhance welfare, and respect for life. That wraps up what's happening internationally for now. Back to you, Elaine. Thank you so much, Gerard, for covering some international news uh, on that front. Now, I'll just bring it back to the Health Director General, uh, reminding us to always uh, observe SOP. As Malaysia gradually reopens its economic and social sectors, the Health Ministry reminds the public not to ignore the perils of the COVID-19 pandemic. The Health Director General says the country's COVID-19 figures remain at a worrying stage and must be controlled. The ministry is striving to break the chain of COVID-19 infections and prevent the formation of more clusters while understanding the importance of the reopening of economic and social sectors by stages. Now, let's take a look at some of the topics that are trending on Twitter. In the Klang Valley, Klang Valley citizens are expressing their happiness as 80% of the population has been vaccinated in the Klang Valley itself. And next, Rakyat Malaysians are hoping that the decision on electing the new PM would be made based on what is best for the riot. And the next story that's trending on Twitter, of course, is Taliban. People on Twitter are talking about thousands of people who are still flooding the Kabul airport with a dream to escape from the Taliban. And of course, that Twitter stories, trending Twitter stories, wraps this edition of the midday update. Get vaccinated, wear a mask, save lives, keep each other safe. Thanks for staying with me till the end of this session. Bye for now. I'm Lena Block.